Hello everybody, this is Tekka. It's been a little while since we've taken a look at the Pine Phone. So in this video, what we're going to be doing is checking out Manjaro Posh. Uh, last time I looked at the Plasma version of Manjaro, and to be honest, it's not my favorite. But I do enjoy the Posh version. I tried a bunch of different of these mobile uh, distributions, and out of all of them, Posh is my second favorite. I'm going to get to my first favorite in a different video. So going over to the desktop here, we have the latest release announcement for the 16th beta version of Manjaro Posh. You can see this was posted just two days ago. It's going to be featuring GNOME 40.4, which if you don't know, Posh is basically just GNOME, but shrinked down to work well on a smartphone. It's going to have Mesa 21.2.2, the Linux kernel 5.14.8, and it does apparently have uh, picture messaging support. So going over some of these features really quick, one thing is on these Pine phones, they aren't really that good day-to-day -day devices and the both on the hardware primarily the hardware and software side but these are a great development and testing tool for these mobile linux operating systems so when it comes to using it on a day-to-day -day basis as your primary phone for at least what i do on my cell phone it's not logical quite yet but over the developments over the last year or so just since i've been playing with it it's getting really close so Firefox has de a dedicated configuration that plays YouTube videos pretty well. We'll test that. Apparently the front and back camera now work, including autofocus. Now it doesn't really have a great camera, so it's going to be fun to check that out. We have auto rotation, a welcome wizard. We're going to look at that. There's, uh, they have the torch working. I'm pretty sure that's just the uh, flashlight on the back and a lot more. I'm not going to get into everything. I will link this if you're interested. Here are the changes since the last beta. You could go ahead and check all that out if you want to, including all the specific version numbers. And here are some of the known issues and things that just don't work at all. Uh, GPS uh, may not work as it should. And then the known issues is after a while, the UI will become unresponsive. Uh, recording may have uh, noisy audio savings. And a lot of the apps are still not as mobile friendly. So what I did, I downloaded the 16th version and I flashed it. I flashed it over to this Pine phone. Now, a lot of people ask me if Pine 64 actually sends me these devices and all that. They do not, unfortunately. So to recoup some of the costs, some of the original purchase costs for this device, this video is brought to you by Skillshare. Jokes aside, Skillshare is a wonderful platform that I've been using to learn a lot of different things, including lighting, video editing, and a lot more. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives where millions of people come together to take the next step in their creative journey. They offer thousands of classes, including illustration, design, photography, video freelancing, and much more. I've been using Skillshare a lot recently to improve the quality of my content. If you take a look at something I recorded a year ago compared to today, Day, there is a huge difference. Now Skillshare is for just about everybody, whether if you're a beginner, pro, the dabblers, or if you are a master in your art who is looking to refine their skills. I recently finished up the course by MKBHD and it was overall magnificent. And from there I've been jumping into a lot of different DaVinci Resolve content since I've started using that video editor a lot more. Also the first 1000 people to use the link in the description we'll get a free month of Skillshare. So make sure you check out that link down below to get your free month. So with that said, big thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Now let's go ahead and jump on to the Pine Phone Manjaro Posh and check this thing out. All right, so this is the Pine Phone by Pine64. Let's go ahead and check out this system we have here. So swipe up to unlock. This is the first boot on Manjaro Posh. So the default password is just gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six. And here we have the setup screen. So let's go ahead and run through this real quick. We are in English, next. Now we have our typing. We have English US already selected, so let's go next. Here we have our Wi-Fi. And I'm actually gonna to connect to this real quick. Let's connect to my Hopkify Wi-Fi. All right, and I think this is the correct password. Let's go ahead and give that a shot. We saw a little bit of animation glitch there, but nothing too bad. So let's go next. Let's slide this keyboard out of the way a bit. Maybe bring this over here. All right, so privacy, location services. I'm gonna go ahead and keep that enabled. 
Now here's where we could go ahead and connect to an account. And we are all done. This is probably a very familiar setup if you've ever used a GNOME operating system or a GNOME desktop environment before. So let's go ahead and start using Manjaro ARM. And here is our applications list. Now with Posh, there's not really like a home screen. You have your applications list. You do have a background, but this is basically what you're gonna be getting here. Let's actually just start from the top here. You have your phone and we have Firefox. So let's see how quickly this takes to boot up. This is the first time, so it might be a little bit quicker in the future. Right there, you can see our background while Firefox tries to go ahead and boot up. And here we are. And you can see, based on the theming and everything like that, it's just the desktop version of Firefox kind of squished down a bit. So if we go ahead and test this out, let's go over to youtube.com hit enter and I'm not going to cut anything out so we can actually see the loading time responsiveness and all that so it's pulling all the thumbnails gathering everything it needs and I will note that I do have a gigabit internet so that's not really going to be a factor and the I do not believe it has hardware acceleration I could be wrong as you can tell I'm not signed in here you are getting some typical YouTube homepage garbage so it's not taking too long to load. I'm gonna hit no thanks for now. And it's starting up. So this is an ad that's playing. And it sounds good. There's no major stuttering or anything like that. And here we go into the actual playback. You saw a little buffering window there. Uh, and it, it's a little bit laggy, but not too bad. Here, let's make sure our brightness is all the way up. And it is, so that is good. Uh, if you didn't know, you could just go ahead and hit the clock up there to access all your toggles, including cellular, data, Bluetooth, and everything you're going to need. Oh, it is bugging a little bit on us. Uh, if I go ahead and hit this little settings thing off to the side, let's see if uh, that actually pulls up for us. Oh, we're skipping. So, at least Firefox on here still isn't the smoothest experience. Let's go ahead and close this out. And now from here we can, let's go ahead and explore some of our other applications. We have Ad Remove Software, which is Pamac, and this is gonna be the mobile version of Pamac. So it's opening up, we see our background again. Here, if I tap this, it's gonna take us back to our applications. But you can see this looks just like Pamac. We have Browse Installed Updates. Now, a lot of these are not gonna look good on a mobile operating system quite yet. One thing I do wanna test, let's see if they have Chromium on here because that might actually work better on a mobile operating system. So let's go ahead and install this and apply it. And uh, optional dependencies, I'm just gonna skip those. Password, uh, I think this might be our default or it's that key ring I set up. And I think that's working. So it was one, two, three, four, five, six. I go ahead and tap on this. Is it gonna give us some extra information? Oh, it looks like it is. Uh, let's go ahead and apply that transaction. And yeah, it's not letting us see exactly what's going on just by tapping it. There could be another way. Oh, there we go. So here is how we're seeing everything that's actually going on. It's downloading Chromium. All right, and I think this transaction is complete. You see transaction is finished there. So we just hit this button to go back to our, not fully our applications, but we can see all of our current open applications as well as all the applications we have available to us. And you can search apps through here. I'm gonna go ahead and swipe this up because I'm not gonna be needing that anymore. And then when you, when you don't have any active applications, it's just gonna show the full list of your applications. So now let's go ahead and jump into Chromium real quick. Based on my experience, especially on a Jing OS, Chromium seems to work a lot better, but it looks like we're gonna run into one of our first issues here, and that's it not really syncing up with this resolution properly. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna grab it real quick. There we go, I was able just to get my finger in there so I could go ahead and actually uh, double tap on the title bar to bring it up. So let's go ahead and travel to uh, YouTube through here. And the cool thing is if you're trying to open up a application and the keyboard's not coming up, you have this right here and that's gonna bring up your keyboard whenever it's just not working by default. So let's go ahead and go to YouTube now it doesn't really seem like this is nearly as optimized as Firefox is. So let's just go ahead and play something. Let's play this GNOME Boxes video that we opened up a little bit ago. And honestly, this is working a little bit better, but it's trying to pull up the full desktop. It's not really recognizing it's on a mobile platform. 
So it's being a little bit more difficult, but you can see I have the full YouTube options. Playback's actually pretty smooth. Let's try to force it to go into a full screen mode here if we're able to, maybe? <laughs> nope, nope, okay. Enough playing around with the web browsers. Those aren't really working too well quite yet. So we are back onto our main application page. We've looked at the App Store, which is just Pamac. Additionally, you have some basic applications here. So you have Calculator, and it's your typical calculator application. I don't need this, so go ahead and just close that out. Two plus two equals four. Go ahead and back out of here, close out the calculator. We have chess, we have disks, and this is GNOME disks. And this is gonna give you full and complete control. So here we have our SD card reader. And you can see this is our master boot record. So this is our full hard drive. So you actually have full manipulation control. This is the full GNOME disks utility. So go ahead and close this out real quick. We have document viewer, fractal. We have Geary as our email client. I'm not actually gonna set up an account, but I just kinda wanna show you what the initial splash screen looks like. So here, it's just like it would be on the uh, desktop operating system. You go ahead and select Gmail, or maybe not. <laughs> uh, Outlook, Yahoo, there we go. So uh, let us go into Yahoo, but Basically that should work. Okay, there's Gmail. So I was just trying to make it go a little quicker than it wanted to go. So let's go ahead and close these out. So you have your image viewer, Lollipop, that's your uh, music player. We have maps, megapixel, podcasts. If I go ahead and open up maps, this is just no maps. And honestly, on this device, it is fairly responsive. And it seems like the uh, GPS is working okay. I'm not sure if it's just pulling that based on my Wi-Fi and me giving it location services. But I mean, it's working pretty good. And you can see how responsive it is. If I go ahead and look something up, so I always use the example of my hometown whenever I look into any map software. Take us over to Yakult, Let's see if it zooms us in. It does. Perfect, it worked good. Let's see if directions works. So it's kind of having an issue there, pulling up the, uh, trying to make it fit but it has given us directions. And if I hit route, for example, let's see how this looks. Oh, it's gonna to try to open this up in a, in a web browser. So that's unfortunate. Let's go ahead and close that out. But it will go ahead and give us turn by turn directions. So if you've ever used a MapQuest before, you'll figure it out. So let's close that out. And let's go ahead and open up Megapixel real quick, because this is the camera application supposedly it's working a little bit better with both front and uh, rear camera and autofocus, so let's see if that actually works. One thing for sure, it took a bit to open up, but I heard the camera activate, so let's go ahead and try this out real quick. So, it's going to be kind of hard for you guys to see because I don't want to uh, move the camera all that much. But let's just try to take a picture of this, see if autofocus is working. And it looks like it kind of is. Here, I got to change the focus on this camera there we go so you guys can kind of see it working fairly well let's take a picture of that nice and you can see as I if I move this closer it is it's there's a little bit of a delay but it is keeping focus now let's check this front facing camera real quick so let's flip that around and it is working hello everybody this is Tech Hut and it's working pretty good. It still still has that really uh, kind of greenish tint, but eh, it, it, it's, it, it is what it is. Okay, so with that, the, the camera's working pretty good. One thing, the phone is getting pretty warm with how much I'm using it. But if we go ahead and scroll down here, we have power supply settings. We'll dive into settings in just a sec. We have full terminal access, a text editor, GNOME tweaks is in here. We have usage, visual voicemail, so that's really cool. Wake mobile. Uh, let's go ahead and dive into usage real quick. Let's see how much RAM and all that it is currently using on this system. So right here we can see the process going. Um, according to, it's kind of confusing what this is telling me, usage and system. So the system's using 20%, but we're at 90% here. So uh, we're all over the place basically. Memory, looks like, whoa, looks like we're using 855 megabytes of RAM of our 2.3 currently available to us. 
If I scroll down, you can see some more detail on exactly what is going on in our system. Additionally, we have thermal, and we are running at about 48 degrees Celsius on our GPU, 47 on our CPU, and then we have some storage stuff. So we can go ahead and see here how much our, uh, our operating system is taking up versus all these different directories on our system. So if we go ahead, slide that up. Let's go ahead and check out the terminal. The terminal is always a fun thing to look at. Let's make this a little more focused. And this is your full Linux terminal. So if I do ls, for example, it's going to show me my current working directory. I can do, let's say, NeoFetch probably isn't installed, but we could go ahead and type this in here. NeoFetch, and it's not found. But luckily, this is Pac-Man, or not Pac-Man, it has Pac-Man. So I can just run a sudo pacman-s neofetch. Let's run that. It's going to ask for a password, which is one, two, three, four, five, and six. Ignore me, I screwed up. There we go. Enter. One thing, actually working on this phone at the angle I'm working at isn't the easiest thing to do, but now we are installing neofetch. Shouldn't take any time at all. It's already done. So now we could go ahead and hit the up button a couple times to get to neofetch. And you can see our Manjaro neofetch is open. It's not going to let me slide over to see it. One thing, it said auto-rotate's working, so let's give that a try. Maybe I have to enable it. Let's go into our top bar here. I'm not seeing it anywhere. Oh, here it is. So auto-rotate on. Tap that again. And now let's see if it rotates for us. Ooh, it did. Nice. So let's get rid of the keyboard. Oh, it's still cut off. Let's run NeoFetch one more time here. Get rid of the keyboard. There we go. Now we're showing up. Everything's showing up here. It's a little odd looking, but I mean, it's there. It's NeoFetch. So let's hit that, close that out, and we can see a whole vertical view, and we can just keep it in this view. So that is really nice. I do like that they got that uh, auto-rotate working. So you see how easy that is. It's almost more responsive than my Android when it comes to the actual auto-rotation. I'm going to disable that for now. Uh, if we go down here, let's check out our settings real quick. And again, if you're at all familiar with GNOME, everything here is going to be uh, fairly recognizable. This is just the sidebar within settings. If I tap on something such as privacy, it's going to take us to the next section where we could go ahead and enable location services, different permissions for different devices within our device. If we go ahead and go back here, I go down, go about, and you can see we are running Manjaro Arm, and we saw a lot of the information we saw over on the... Uh, the NeoFetch, including our GNOME version is 40.4. We're running in Wayland and everything else. So if I go ahead and swipe that up, and let's just to see what's going on here, let's open up this GNOME tweak tool. See if it gives us the same options that we would expect in the desktop GNOME version. So here, uh, oh, it's post mark, uh, market OS tweaks. So that's interesting. We have Posh, Power, Disk Unlocker, Appearance, Fonts, and About. So Posh, for example, if I tap on that, here we have uh, some clock stuff. We can show our battery percentage, so that's nice. Uh, under clock, let's say I wanted to add the date. There we go. Cool. So then we have power on battery. You can enable or disable the uh, the shutoff, well, the display shutoff and all that. So let's go back. We have disk unlocker. If I go into appearance, I can change the appearance, so I can prefer dark. We can go with the... Uh, this, which I think is the same, I want to say. You can enable preferred dark icons. You could change your icons. Looks like we actually have quite a bit here, so you could change those if you'd like to. Let's go back. You have fonts and then about. And this is going to give us, again, the same information we got previously. So that is cool, and that is our device. So that was Manjaro Posh on the Pine phone. As time goes on, I am becoming more and more impressed with the development of these Linux mobile operating systems. Uh, big thank you to YouTube members and Patreon supporters. We have Mitchell Valentino, Phil Matt, Kyle, and Timo Anthony. Thank you to all the other Techie and Techie Plus members. Links in the description if you'd like to support the channel. Uh, and if you are interested in more of these Pine phone uh, mobile Linux device type of videos, just let me know down in the comments below and tell me what your thoughts are on these uh, mobile Linux operating systems. One thing you might be interested in is checking out my Jingpad video. You can hit the I up above to go ahead and check out that video. With all that said, have a beautiful day and goodbye.